Ladies and gentlemen, uh, there's no easy way to say this, but James Harden was just traded to the Los Angeles Clippers. It is 11 a.m. for me right now in Arizona, and I just found out that he got traded, and we're all about to talk about this together. Now, originally, I wanted to go over the trade itself, you know, like what the Clippers traded, what the Sixers traded. However, it is so early in the morning that there are no details about the trade itself. I don't know if it's for picks. I don't know if it's for players. I have no idea what was given up in this trade. I even waited about 15 minutes for the trade to go down and yeah nothing has happened yet so in the video if i do find out i'll either cut to it right here or i'll just talk about it later on now usually what i like to do in these trade videos is go over you know both teams and say hey how is this going to affect this team or that team and in this situation it is very hard for me to talk about the sixers right now i mean there are some things i'm going to talk about for example like tyrese maxi i think that's a topic we need to discuss but like for the clippers obviously we can talk about the impact that harden is going to make now first things first let's talk about Harden's cap situation. He is set to make about $34 million. So it's safe to say that the Clippers aren't really going to be able to make any more moves. With them getting Harden's contract, it seems like this team is basically done for the rest of the year when it comes to making moves. Now, who they actually traded within this trade is going to be interesting. I don't think it was Kawhi or Paul George. I doubt it was Russell Westbrook. I really feel like they like Westbrook. Okay, time out, time out. We have a specs bomb that just got announced. So while I'm recording this video, a source just came out and said that the deal for one is not done, which I expected because there were no player details that were released. But also, there is a source saying that another team is possibly involved in the trade. Their role would really just be taking on unwanted salaries, which does raise a couple questions. I mean, with him taking on that much mu- Wait, what the fuck? Oh shit, okay, 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 okay. Also, I don't know why this happened, but Danny Green just got waived for absolute no fucking reason. So enjoy your time in Cancun, buddy. So now that the trade details are official, I can finally discuss the trade in full detail. So I'm gonna start with the Sixers perspective of this. So of course, within this trade, you weren't gonna get a player that had the same value as James Harden. But to be fair, this guy is not exactly the most well-known for being a good teammate. And ever since he's left Houston, he's never been a guy you could really rely on to be on your team. Whether it was the injury history that he had or the fact that this man has constantly had problems with every single team he's been on. I mean, Philly knew that. That's why they took a risk when they got Harden. And in theory, this could have been a great deal. But Harden and Maury, they just had issues that I don't think we're ever going to get fixed. I mean, this man literally went to China to call Daryl Maury a liar. In fact, I'm pretty sure he was also at a strip club and had a sign. I don't remember that, though. Don't quote, don't quote me on that. Now, giving away PJ Tucker, I don't understand that unless it was for cap space. But again, that doesn't make any sense because I feel like he still had value on your team. But now from the Clippers perspective, I feel like this is once again a big risk and they also gave up a lot of assets for Harden. For example, they gave up Nicholas Batum, Marcus Morris, Robert Covington, which I find it interesting that the four players they traded for are all forwards. And it's not like they were completely empty at that position. They have Kawhi Leonard. Paul George can probably play forward if they need him to. I think getting Batum as a piece was solid. I like Robert Covington. Marcus Morris might be built like Squidward from that one SpongeBob episode but still. Honestly, I have no intention to speak on KJ Martin other than that it is once again another forward. And I guess the pick swap is something that is kind of interesting to talk about even though that's in 2028. For context, I'll be 24 and 2 for 1 will be 77 years old checking into yet another retirement home. Now from the Clippers perspective, this is a risk they had to take. They give up a lot of assets. But I do think if you were going to steal two assets from the Sixers that you had a reasonable chance of getting, these were the best two you could have gotten. Kawhi was never going to get traded and I don't think Paul George was either. I feel like this was the best case scenario of what LA could have gotten out of this trade. Now, what I find very ironic about this is literally five days ago, it came out the Clippers were going to stop because the NBA season was starting. Now, I know Harden really hadn't reported to training camp just yet. In fact, things were getting pretty toxic. I think a report came out that Harden tried to go onto the team airplane, but he was stopped by security, which honestly, that just seemed kind of petty to me. So regardless, this was a pretty toxic relationship and I'm glad it's finally over. I don't think Harden will ever play for a more led team ever and I think that's okay. I learned a lot about Harden and Maury from these past couple months because of the bullshit that I've seen go on. So for the Sixers perspective, they got rid of a guy that they didn't need and PJ Tucker, I don't understand that, but I guess it made sense in some way. They also got a bunch of depth at the forward position, which is honestly good to hear. I think what a lot of people forget when some of these superstars ask out is you're not going to get the same value for a player. It is a very rare thing to happen. However, if you are getting rid of someone that doesn't even want to be on the team, 
it makes no sense to keep them. Why not trade him for a load of assets that you could use than guys that probably want the opportunity to play on said team? Now, from the Clippers perspective, I don't really know why you did this. You traded for a guy that honestly is starting to age and is starting to show regression. You also gave up a bunch of depth that you did not need to give up in any way, shape, or form. You gave up someone that has been on four teams in four years. It's like that one high school that is just going from guy to guy because nobody fucking wants her. In the end, this might be able to end well if the Clippers can find a way to utilize him properly. From what I've heard, he's probably not going to be the starting point guard. He's probably going to run the two, which makes a lot more sense because Westbrook's actually been playing pretty well at that role. Also, there is no depth on this team. You traded all of your possible depth away, especially at the forward position for a guard. In theory, that might be a good idea, but I don't think it's going to end well in the playoffs. I don't think this is a league shattering move I really just don't think it is. I think it's going to be fun and exciting to talk about and sure this video will get views but like within a month the Clippers are still going to suck. I will say if I'm the Clippers I am glad that they did not trade Terrence Mann. I think he's someone that does have potential for the future and I do think that was the one asset that was kind of holding this trade back. I feel like if Terrence Mann was offered about a month ago this trade would have already been done but then again we don't know the whole conversation so I'm not even going to really get into it. But if you're from the Sixers perspective I think you have to look at it this way. You already have someone that is a better version of James Harden at this point. I think Tyrese Maxey is already better than James Harden because Harden has started to regress. We've established this. Maxey is someone that I think has more potential and he's actually a playmaker at a very young age. I think the Sixers wanted to use Maxey more than Harden but they kind of couldn't because it's a really big name and you can't just put Harden on the bench. I do think the dynamic between Maxey and Bede is going to be a lot better compared to what Harden and Bede had. Now there's also also a possibility that this is just the beginning of them blowing the entire team up. I think Embiid could possibly go to New York, but I'm not even talking about that because that fuck ass team doesn't deserve him. Yeah, this may be a James Harden trade video, but it's fuck the Knicks till the day I die. Now, if I had to grade this trade from each team's perspective, it gets a little interesting. If I'm the Sixers, I'm going to give them a B plus. It would have been an A, but giving up PJ Tucker is just something I don't think they should have done. I mean, yeah, Tucker's getting older, but I feel like he's a piece that you should have if you're trying to win a championship. But I still think getting rid of James Harden was the best thing you could have done, especially because he was not even playing for you guys. On the contrary, I'm going to give the Clippers a C-. This trade is either going to end up as the best trade of the season and the Clippers go on to be a champ- <laughs> Yeah, that's never gonna fucking happen. I have a better chance of going on a date with SZA than the Clippers ever winning a championship. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. Like, that shit is never going to happen. All troll shit aside, I love this trade for the Sixers. I hate it for the Clippers. Oh yeah, also happy Halloween and do not get fucked by Big Dick Randy. Yeah, there's a chance that I'm not gonna be answering comments for a while because I'm currently on the- Randy, you are hard. There ain't no escaping me. He can't get away. He in my lap right now. I'm taking cheeks. Halloween. I'm on a US tour and I'll be in your city Snatching off that butt and taking candy I'ma show no bitch